Today, we are going to add a new feature to our awesome app CLI. That is a command line that you run when you do an awesome app new and awesome app dev. And the feature we're going to add is to allow conditional execution of comments based on our awesome2ml. So right now, if we go to our awesome2ml, those are the comments that are run when you do an awesome app dev. So we go in order and everything can be customizable. And one of the issues is that some of the commands, for example, the Tori icons, the icon doesn't change often, but to make sure that everything works, we always run these commands. So for example, if we open our application, and so that is our base template, and we're going to do our awesome app dev. And we're going to see here that we're generating the icons, and then it compiles everything, and then eventually we're going to have our awesome app. But the issue here is that every time it's going to recompile all of these files, even if they are here. So if I do another awesome app dev, it will recompile the icons. So that is a little bit silly and a waste of time. So what we want is since all of the icons are derived from this app-icon-png, we want to say, well, if, for example, there is a missing one, the 32 by 32, then generate everything. Otherwise, you can skip it. We're going to assume that things are fine. So that is very simple, but then can add value in the process. So let's cut that. So we're going to go back to our command line. And what we want is something like when no file at, and then we will give the path. So obviously not this file, but for example, the 32 by 32, the first one. And so the runner will say, well, I run this command only if there is no file at this place. And in fact, the when, we might want to extend it later. So we're going to make it as a 2ML table, which is basically an object, a hash map. And so we're going to have when dot no file at, and so far is going to be the only properties that we're going to support. So that is what we're going to implement today. So now that we had that into our Tori ML, we can run our unit test to make sure that we didn't break anything. So one thing that I like to do sometimes is to split the unit test into their own folder. It's not integration test, it's unit test, it's still part of the source. But I put them in their own folder such as I can better see what has been implemented. You can eat both ways, doesn't really matter, both works. And if we go to our test config, this is where we have our config parsing. And so we want to make sure that we didn't break that when we added. And the way that I like to run my unit test when I'm developing a new feature is this way. I do a cargo watch dash q for quiet dash x, and then I do a test dash beans. And actually, I go very narrow. So I just take this guy and I even add a no capture. So when I'm going to press enter on this one, it's going to compile. And every time I'm going to press save on any of these files, it will recompile and run the test. Only this one. So now what I can see is I do the parsing of the config over there. I get my runners and then I check the runner, make sure that we have seven. And then I check the second runner, which happened to be the Tori icons. And so for example, with our print here, I can do a print. I have a little snippet that add me that. And so this way I can search across the code and make sure that I remove it before commits. And now I'm going to say runner and I'm going to print the runner, there's a nice debug. Press save, and then we can see if we scroll down that we have our Tori, and obviously we do not have our when. So we're going to close the terminal, and then we're going to go to our runner where we have our code, and we want to add our when. So what we're going to add is pub struct when, and we're going to say a no file at, and that will be an option of string. Now we can take that. We make sure that that derives debug and deserialize. And then we do a pub when, and that will also be an option of when. And that's it. We already have it there. So obviously we have some little warning because it's not used, it's not read, but it's already a good step. So now if we turn on our terminal, do our magic cargo watch, and then we should see our win. That's pretty cool. So now we can stop that. We didn't really need the cargo watch, obviously, but often, sometimes I have it when it gets a little bit more trickier. I'm going to close the terminal. And now what we want is to run the command only if it's needed. 
So where we run the command is our run dev. That is our clap executor in a way. And so that is a run dev, takes a clap subcommand, which we're not really using today. We have our root deer. And that is just a way to make sure that the downstream code doesn't hard code the root deer, but right now it's just the default path. Later, that can come from an argument. And then we ensure that we have our awesome to ML. We keep track of the children to watch, such as at the end, we can terminate the process trees of the children. And then that is where we run for each runners. So we get the runners over there. We consume it, it's okay. And then for each runner, we iterate. And then we run the runner and we execute the child. So we have two strategies. One is we can, inside the exec, it can decide if we will do the compile or not. Or the other strategy is that we're going to do it here, such as the runner will implement a should run, and then it shouldn't run, then we'll skip it and we'll iterate and we'll go to the next one. So we're going to take the second option because this way it gives a little bit more controls on how we want to display it to the user. So let's go to the runner again. And so now that we have our type done, we're going to go to the implementation. So that is the exec. We're not going to touch it. We're going to implement a new method. Pub doesn't have to be async. Fn should run. That will take the self. We also take the root deer because we are going to compute the path from the root deer. We'll make sure that we don't hard code that. That will take a reference of path and it will return a result. So that is our result that comes from the prelude. So that is a pattern I like is to have a prelude for all the crate and that just have my result on my error for the crate. And then I just specify the type that I want to return. That is a pattern very well known in Rust. And then we are going to return should run, which we are going to create. I like to put the to-do here, such as we don't get too much complaint. And now I'm going to have a pub enum should run. That is going to be our enum. There's going to be two variants. The first one is yes, where I go, you can run it. We don't need any more data on this one. And then the other one is going to be a no, and we're going to have a string, which will be the reason. Okay, so now let's implement our should run. So the default on the should run should be to return a yes. So basically, if there is no condition specified, it will return yes. So we're going to return OK, should run, yes. So now without the to-do, if I press save, it's going to compile, everybody is going to be happy, but obviously we didn't implement any logic. Now, the first thing that we want is to get the no file at. So one thing that I like to do sometimes is go variable by variables, result to have things in matches or if let, and then after I reduce it with if let or matches, if it makes the code more readable. So the first thing that we're going to extract is from self and when. And the thing here to be careful is we don't want to take when as is because otherwise we are moving when out and we could take a reference of when, but that wouldn't be that good either because if I toggle the inlay, then it will be a reference of option, but then we'll have the when object over there. What we really want is as ref. And so now we have a new option, which has a reference of when, which is what we want. And now we want to go one level down and we're going to use and then, because the when that I'm just going to have with W is going to return our no file at, which is also an option. So to avoid having nested options, we use the and then. Now the same way that we'll move the option out, we don't want to give the reference there because what we want is not the reference of the option, but the reference of the content of the option. And so that is we do as ref again. And now if we toggle the in liaison, we can see that we have an option of a reference of a string, which is exactly what we want. And now we can do our if let sum no file at. So now this no file at will be the reference of string. We are going to create the no file path from the root deer, root deer, join, and that will return a path buff. We could shadow the variable, but we are not because we are going to use the string later. So I'm using that for now. And now I'm going to do an if path exist 
of our reference of no file. And then if it exists, we say that we shouldn't run. So we're going to return early, and we're going to have our should run, no, and we're going to format. And yes, I have alias format to F, I'm sorry. Path no file at found. And so sometimes that is a pattern that I use, is result to duplicate some of the return value to avoid the keyword return. What I do is I have the default, which is the most likely thing, the fallback kind of return at the end. And then with my if conditions, I return early if something match. So sometimes I use match and if else, and I return the value as part of the block. And sometimes I do this strategy. It doesn't really matter. Use what works for you. Okay, so now we can go back to our run dev. And when we are running our runner, before we run it, we want to check if we should run it or not. So for that, we are going to do a match on runner should run. We give our root deer and we don't forget this will return a result. So we don't forget to have the question mark. And then we have the two arms of the match, which is should run no. And that will be the reason. Sometimes what I like in the matches is to put the shortest one first and then the longest one later. But again, that is personal preference. And in this case, we're just going to do a println. Skip running runner because reason. And then on the should run, yes, we're just going to put, you guessed it, all of this code. We need to import this guy. And here I forgot to put runner.name, press save, and then that's it. And that should make it happen. So now I could have a unit test or integration test. But so far, we're going to turn on our terminal and do a cargo install path dot. And that will install that command line locally on my machine, such as I can test it. Sometimes I even do cargo watch on this one. So now we get our application back. We're going to close the icon for now. We're going to delete the awesome to ML. That will get recreated. And we're going to do awesome app dev. And then skip the icons, because the icons were already built. We have our app, and if I close it, and I go to the icons, I'm going to delete this file, and now I'm going to run it again. Now we see that it generates all the icons, and we still have our application. And that will conclude this coding session. So next time you install the Cargo Install Awesome App, create your application, and you do an awesome app dev, you will create the icons only the first time. And then as long as you don't remove the 32 by 32, then you won't recreate it again. Until next one, happy coding.